Okay, it is time for Monday night car repair, or at least Monday night attempted car repair. Uh, here with me if you like good ideas. This is my dad's 2003 Pontiac Vibe that I kind of um, inherited, I suppose you could say, when uh, he eventually upgraded and I got my license. And uh, it has made its way up, uh, it's kind of <laughs> made its way up here with me rather than uh, staying around at its usual home. But it has developed a little problem recently. Well, a little bit more than a little problem. Uh, the starter has failed, or at least is well on its way to doing that. Um, basically, the other day, tried to start it, and it, um, despite being middle of summer, or very close to, I guess summer hasn't technically officially started yet, but um, I tried to start it, and it sounded like I was starting it in the dead of winter. Uh, the starter was just, you know, it's kind of struggling to turn. After a couple times do it, it got progressively worse and worse. I actually ended up replacing the battery thinking it was that because the battery that was in there was actually fairly old and was at, about at its life expectancy. But that did not help. Kept doing that, kept getting worse until eventually tried to start it. Nothing happened. Turned the key to the start position. Dead silence. Well, not dead silence. You could hear the fuel pump running. But at least I think that's what that sound was. But you there was nothing out of the starter, no clicks, no nothing. So, ended up having to call AAA, they came out and somebody, uh, well their guy ended up whacking it and got it to start and got the thing back to here. Um, but now I've got to actually do the real repair on it. So tonight, we are going to be attempting to figure out how to do this. Now, this isn't entirely improvised, I, do va I did do some research I have at least somewhat of an idea what I'm doing here, but you all will get to follow me as I try to do this, or at least as long as my camera's battery lasts. We'll see how much video I actually manage to get here um, between the battery of the camera and um, and how much I can actually do with a camera in my hand. Okay, well the first thing we got to do before we do anything else is disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Um, I might actually just to get it out of the way, I might just take the battery out entirely. I don't really know if there's any particular reason not to do that. Um, I'm sure if there is, somebody's going to cane me for it in the comments and, uh, well, you live and you learn. But, uh, I mean, I've never had a problem pulling the battery out. And you know what? Give me an excuse to uh, go test the uh, test out the RDS clock time on the, uh, the, the stations I maintain. <laughs> I've done it on, I've tested it recently, when I replaced the battery I tested it on one station, I've got a couple others i got to test, so I guess I will, I, maybe I will end up doing that, but uh, let's jump right to that. Okay, with that out of my way, now what we got to do is we got to get this fan shroud out of here. And so the way this is done, from what I understand, is there is a bolt on each side, and somewhere around here there is a little wiring harness that... <coughs> Oh, this is going to turn out great already. Um, and there's a little wiring harness we got to disconnect. So let's see if we can get that done. Now, the trick here, and the one thing I see already, is there's a hose that runs along here. And I think it may even be connected to this assembly. So, uh, cause actually, I believe the uh, coolant uh, overflows in there. So, you're going to have to do a little bit of clever pivoting to get this thing out. Okay, so I was approximately right about that. There was a bolt on either side and a uh, wiring harness connected into the back of the fan motor which you probably can't see because I'm in a huge shadow but it's a big fan in the middle of that assembly maybe it'll look better on your computer screen than it does on my little tiny camera screen um, so you do what you end up doing is you're gonna you end up pivoting it on this hose here so you kinda turn it around like that so that the thing can move out of the way now comes the fun part. Digging in here and trying to actually find the starter. <laughs> um, of course you can't see it, which is just great. And my flashlight's in my wrong pocket. But I managed to grab it. But I do believe it's right there. So uh, that is what we're trying to get at, which is going to be all kinds of fun 
see that already. Supposedly, actually, and I think we'll find this out the hard way in a little bit here, supposedly one of the two bolts you gotta undo to get this thing out, you can actually only feel, not even see. So, uh, this, this is shaping up to be all kinds of fun. Okay, so I went ahead and unpacked the new starter so we can kind of see what we're up against here. So the first thing is, there are two different wiring connections you gotta get, uh, disconnect here. One's a big, big fat wire that goes on this, that goes underneath this nut here. The other is a little wiring harness thing that clips in here. I believe those are the only two we have to deal with, I think. We'll find out soon enough. Then, there are two bolts that hold this thing in. One through this hole, one through this hole, and interestingly, they actually go in opposite directions. Um, so, that's something to be aware of. So, armed with that information, it's time to dig in, try to find this thing, and disconnect all that stuff, and get the old starter out. Okay, a couple things I want to interject here before I actually get the whole thing out. First, important thing. When you remove this fan shroud, the radiator is now exposed. The radiator is fairly fragile. Be very careful not to bump the radiator because one thing I did see when I was doing my research on this is people have found out the hard way that if you bump it you will probably end up springing a leak in it and that will be um, not terribly nice on your wallet. Um, <laughs> so uh, careful about that. Don't do that. Other thing, which of course you're now not really going to be able to see in there, which let me see if I can get the flashlight back out again. See I have now gotten the wires off. Let's see if the camera will actually focus on that. See the, uh, the nut that was holding on that, ma that big wire. There was actually a rubber boot over that. So what you actually need to do, the rubber boot is tied to the, the wire itself. And so you need to, when you pull that back, it will actually kind of slide back along the wire. And that's how you get it out of the way. So, a couple notes there. Okay, we're back. About an hour and a half later. <laughs> uh, actually, an hour and a half and a uh, borrowed socket extender later. Um, you will need one of these, let me tell you. Because you got to get, let me see if we can actually see this. Let me get my flashlight out again. Why do I keep putting this in my wrong pocket? The bolt is all you got to get behind the uh, this dipstick here and this wiring and all this stuff. The bolt's way back in there. Other thing, not only is the bolt way back in there, it is incredibly recalcitrant. Um, I don't believe the starter has actually ever been replaced on this car. That's got to be some miracle, because uh, from what I've read, they normally fail much sooner than this. And like I said, this is an 03, and my dad bought it new. Um, but that bolt is incredibly recalcitrant, and what I actually had to do to get it to come loose, is I had to get this thing on it, and take my other ratchet, and kind of stack them. Actually, I think I had a uh, smaller extender on this one at the time, which might have given me a little extra leverage. I kind of put it like that, and then grabbed that and pushed down, and that eventually knocked it loose. Granted, it also knocked this thing off the bolt, and I then had to put it back on there, which was kind of annoying. Um, so, here's the comparison. <laughs> the old, very dirty starter. Let's see, it does actually say Toyota on it, because this was, this is actually technically just a rebadged Toyota Matrix, that's what the vibe is. This is the new one which was branded AC Delco, but I'm not really sure if they're just rebranding something. But I figure if AC Delco is good enough for every other GM car, it's probably good enough for me. Um, or at least good enough to uh, run me until I have to give, until I, well, have to, until I willingly, most likely, give this back to my dad in favor of getting myself uh, my own much nicer car. So, the other thing I noticed speaking of recalcitrant, is once you get these bolts out, this whole assembly gets stuck in there. And it takes a lot of doing to get it out of there. I had to do some creative stuff, uh, you know, trying to wedge part of a screwdriver, you know, what did I wedge? Wedge this thing in there to try and lever on it. I'll put that back, because I probably won't need it. Otherwise I'll leave it on the ground or something creative. Um, 
I try to lever it loose with that, tried whacking it with the uh, the ratchet, trying to get it loose, eventually managed, and the other big thing is reached my hand back here and grabbed around the back of it and tried to wiggle it back and forth, and eventually the thing came out after a whole lot of doing. So, what we're going to do is we're now going to attempt to uh, do the reverse of the removal here. Put this one in, and we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it'll be easier than the removal was. Okay, new starter is in, and indeed that was much easier to get that in than it was to get the old one out. Now the, doesn't look like you had to do anything special to get the gears to line up on that. It just, the, you just put it in the hole, and the gears will figure themselves out, I suppose. Or at least I couldn't see any obvious way that they needed to be lined up. There it is with that boot over the, uh, over that terminal. One other thing I noticed, um, that on the old starter, the nut on that terminal was a 12 millimeter nut. On the new starter, it was a 13 millimeter nut. So, if you get one of these AC Delco starters, keep that in mind if you're sitting there wondering why your socket won't fit on the nut. That is why. So, now it's time to put the fan shroud back in. I think I managed to do this without any casualties to the radiator. And then, put the battery back in, and we'll find out, will it start? Okay, everything's back together. One other thing I want to note, I didn't notice when I was taking this apart, I'm not sure if you can really see down there, but there's a little hook that thing's got to, that, that part of that shroud's got to hook around as you put it back in, otherwise it won't fit back in right. So, keep that in mind, there's one of those on each side. Keep that in mind as you're putting it back in. Now, the moment everybody's been waiting for. Will it start? Now we're gonna find out if it will start or if I did something dumb. Okay, anyone wanna place any bets? Let's go ahead and power this on. Wow, I didn't trip theft lock. That's gotta be some kind of a wonder. Ready? Here we go. Oh yeah. That sounds a whole lot healthier than the old one did. Even when the old one worked. See, it's a bit of a balmy night here in uh, Rochester. Uh, it, was, it was about 90 some odd degrees today. So, um, that's a thing. It was, uh, that's why I'm doing this at night, not earlier in the day. Oh, well, now that we got this thing running, let's tune it to the station I haven't done yet, and we'll have some fun with RDS clock time. There's a little bonus at the end of this video. I tested on WRUR earlier, the last time I had to do this, when I replaced the battery. Now we're going to test it on WXXI FM. And later I'll try it on the uh, on uh, our translator W298CH. See, it's carrying clock time also. Let's see if it sent it out yet. There it is. It's the way I did that. And that's correct. It really is that late. Go ahead and turn that off. Um, the way I did that was I just pressed and held, I, well, what I first I did, I, I tuned to a station that was carrying RDS clock time. You know, particularly not only carrying RDS, but also sending out the clock time package, which there really isn't, the only way you can really figure that out with consumer gear is to try this. Wait about a minute or so, you know, it doesn't have to be that long. You have to wait until, the clock time packets are only sent out so often, so you have to wait until one's sent out, and you kind of, again, you kind of have to guess when that is. Then you press and hold the hour and minute buttons for a bit. And it flash, if it flashes updated and changes the clock, I'll probably turn this off now. Um, if it flashes updated and changes the clock, then you got it. If it says no update, then you either have to wait longer or that station is not carrying it. But either way, I'd say that repair was pretty successful. So thank you all for watching, and uh, time for me to clean up my hands. <laughs>